As educators, we often resist the idea of online learning because we know it just isn't the same as teaching in person. We want to understand our students and connect with them and help them learn individually, and that's hard to do online. However, online learning is growing and becoming a major trend in K-12 education. For example, this chart shows the growth of virtual charter schools in Wisconsin over the last 20 years, and that doesn't even count online learning that is now offered through the public schools directly and will likely be here to stay even after COVID. So even though part of you as a teacher might rebel against the idea of teaching online, and you should, you may very well end up being involved in online teaching in some form in the future. In fact, a School of Education graduate who now teaches for an online academy said the following on an alumni survey recently. Online education is becoming a major player in the education industry. A class on how to teach online would be extremely useful. We can't really offer a whole class on online teaching, but I do want to give you four principles to keep in mind related to teaching online effectively. Think of online teaching kind of like maintaining a long distance relationship. It's not ideal by any means, but it can work if you put effort into it and integrate these four things, interaction, flexibility, focused content, and intentional design. Number one, interaction. You really need to over communicate. Interact early and often in lots of different ways with online students. You need to insert a human element into the online course through individual and group interactions. That means lots of comments in the learning management system, frequent messages on an online newsletter or blog, lists of things to do, and many invitations to students to interact. You need to overdo it a bit. If you're doing it right, it's going to feel like you're bugging them. Build community. As part of bringing a human element, you need to be intentional about bringing some personality to the class. Don't just post information. Communicate with character, be real, and work on developing an online persona, a unique voice. You can use video, images, expressive writing, even frequent use of emoticons. Students identify with transparency, so relax and embrace imperfection. It doesn't have to be perfect. Design for interaction. Incorporate synchronous Zoom sessions, even if not everyone is able to join at the same time. Hold them at a variety of times and give students bonus points for participating. Don't make those a lecture time, but maybe interview someone who has interesting insight in the content area, have discussions, or even play games. You should also encourage authentic discussion forum posts. Make introduction posts fun and interesting, use pictures, and reply frequently. One way to do this is to assign multiple students to moderate the discussion and keep it going. Another way to help with interaction is to facilitate excellent group projects through collaborative apps like Google Apps. You'll need to be very clear about roles and participation expectations, have students decide who will do what, and inform you of their plan and then follow up with a survey asking how the team members performed on their assigned tasks. Communicate promptly. You want students to feel like they can pop into your virtual office anytime and ask a question. Unfortunately, that means you might be checking your phone and saying, excuse me, I need to answer a student question in the evening at times. It's part of the nature of online learning. Principle number two is flexibility. Online courses are often asynchronous. That means that students are not engaged live at the same time. Instead, the emphasis is on flexibility, participating at various self-selected times. This can have benefits in making a challenging schedule work or helping a student find a time and place for improved focus. However, it can be a challenge for designing interaction in your online class. So provide lots of opportunities for students to interact with each other. In order to make flexibility work for the student, you have to be always on as a teacher. Make them feel like you're just a click away. So that means prompt grading, prompt feedback, quick discussion replies, and immediate responses to emails. 
Number three, focused content. Your instruction online should be more efficient because you can take advantage of technological tools to eliminate clutter. For example, many learning management systems allow you to make interactive step-by-step -step tutorials so students can learn at their own pace. Sometimes little quiz questions are built in so you can add reinforcement if a student doesn't answer a question correctly before moving on to the next step in the tutorial. Video offers another advantage to online instruction because students can pause and rewind in order to make sure they get something right. Many platforms allow students to speed up or slow down lectures to suit their pace of learning. Video also allows you to minimize class clutter. Announcements can be handled via email or blog. Discussion forums take the place of class discussions. So instead, you can focus on efficiently communicating as clearly as possible. Studies show that instructional videos are most effective when they are kept short, 10 to 15 minutes if possible. So split up your content into chunks and write a script so you can say it efficiently and not wander around verbally or repeat yourself or say something five different ways. You can even download a teleprompter app to use with your phone when recording video to help you pace yourself and communicate clearly. Another thing you can do to make your instruction more efficient is to curate internet material. There's a ton of really good instructional content out there, but there's also a lot of bad or misleading information. The online teacher's role is to curate high quality material and facilitate student interaction with it through collaborative annotation apps, for example. You can also tap into content libraries like Khan Academy. Use them as a supplement to your instruction in, in a targeted way. You can even customize the content you provide to each individual student so you can help them with areas of weakness or encourage them to go above and beyond. Finally, principle four is intentional design. You have to design your course very carefully and make it as easy to use as possible. Think through everything in advance and build your course well before you launch it. It's very difficult to make course tweaks on the fly in an online environment. Also, think about how to make your course user friendly. The user interface must be crystal clear. There's a learning curve for the students online. They have to figure out where to get the information they need and how to do various tasks online. Your job is to make it organized and predictable. Put things in places that make sense as you think about it from the perspective of the student. Make it super intuitive. And then, of course, make it visually engaging and interactive. So those are the four principles of online teaching. Include lots of opportunity for interaction, Build as much flexibility for the students as possible into the class. Work on creating focused content for efficient instruction. And incorporate intentional design to make your online class easy to use.